holiness is already at work. So that's a mystery at work at that time. So we waiting on something to work in the future. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Am I, y'all follow me? Yeah, sure. said, he said the mystery of iniquity do it already work. How, did, how are we making this a futurist text? text? We're using this scripture to, and say it's going to be this entity in, over, in the, over in Israel or over in the east and, and that this thing, this antichrist spirit is going to be raised up. And I took, like I told you, you're going to get shot in the head and everybody's going to see him three days later. He's going to be raised up. And him and the false prophet. And, uh, it makes good movies. You know, so if you want to look at Left Behind, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, get some popcorn, get some raisinets, maybe have some whoppers, sit around, you know, campfire, you know, get you some good toasties, put on these, you know, just do whatever. Just relax a little R&R &R because it's, it's fiction. There's no biblical precedence for it. God wants to raise up the people that understand that the mystery of iniquity was at work at that time. And it's at work now. And it's going to continue to be at work. And the iniquity is in the temple. There's some things that were where? In the temple. And if you already know who the temple is, right? Who's the temple? We are. So there are some things in us that are antithetical to what God wants to do. Am I right? The good that we want to do, we can't. And that which we don't want to do, we do. Come on now. Anybody want to attest to that? But, but don't just stop there midstream. you got to get the whole conclusion of the matter. You go to the, seven, the last part of chapter 7 and tell you, thanks be unto God who has delivered me from this body of death. So God has given us the opportunity to be delivered from this body of death so that we can become a temple of the Lord. Come on now. Because the gift of God is eternal life. It's a quality of life. It's not a length of life. It's a quality of life. Eternal life. Aeonis life. It's, if you look it up, dissect it too, it's Aeonis Zoe. It's the quality of life. I want a quality of life. Because you can live a long time and never have quality. Am I right? You can struggle for 80 years. I want the God kind of life. If not, you can't measure it. By houses and cars. You can't measure it by increase in, uh, 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 economically or in, 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 in uh, accumulation and, and assets and all that other stuff. It can't be measured that way. He gave us the fruit of the Spirit to let us know what the quality of life is all about. Everybody wants the gifts, but I want the fruit. Because the fruit denotes his character. The fruit of the Spirit is his character. I want his character. I, I can, we can train you to be anointed. We can show you how to activate the gifts. But to make you a... <laughs> yeah. To get you to comply to fruit is a hard thing. Because gifts are given. Fruits are born. Gifts are given. But fruits are born. And fruits start off as seeds, don't they? Which means there's a process, huh? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that word again, process. Because we look at process as punishment. <laughs> Come on. Because it's got process got boundaries and statutes and limitations and expectations. And yeah, am, I, am I right? Yeah, that's what normally process. It's, you, you know, there's none of that. Mm -mm. Like they say back in the days what Zena said, the quality gotta go in. But the name goes out. Everybody wanted to be a shooting star. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm anointed. I'm telling you, your gift can take you where your character can't keep you. Wow. I want my character to take you places. I want them to be able to say, that was a man sent from God. Yep. All the rest of that stuff, the wood, the head, stuff are gonna burn up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not into titles and all that stuff, but giftings and all that stuff. I want to be known as a good father, Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. good granddaddy. That's the stuff I, I live for. Mm -hmm. Makes me just turn boy. You talking about just make you blush? 
to have a good name is what it's all about. That's right. How is your name in the city? Yes. When people talk about you, say, yeah, yo, you bring my name up and say, I go to Apostle Mark. Oh, he's the best. He's just a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's right on. Two thumbs up. <laughs> but the big run is scattered. Oh, okay, let me get on that here. No, 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 no. Because no. my reputation matters to me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Y'all pull it. So the lawless one sits as God in the temple. This is not a single man, but a corporate man, the anthropos. The total composite of humanity. Amen. So as I look at this, I can see there is a propensity for a false dimension to coexist when God wants to do something. The man is in the mystery of iniquity. Y'all got that? That want to walk in levels of lawlessness under no governance, under no government. And God is looking for people that's going to be governed. In fact, I, I, I was thinking yesterday about something I wrote some years ago, and I heard it. I was waking up. I can't remember when, but I was waking up, and God told me, one eye and one ear. There's no mixture. Y'all look at me like, what do you got to do with that? If you knew your Bible, you would shout. <laughs> yeah, if you knew your Bible. Because he talked, when he was talking to him in the gospel, he, he talked to him, to him that has ears. When you get to the last book, the apocalypse, the book of Revelation, he said what? He has, he that has an ear. So we need to have an ear and a eye because we need to be single eye. Come on now. And that is where there's no mixture. And that is what the Lord is looking. In other words, that, that is the place where the law of God has been hidden in their hearts. That's where there's no mixture, but we have this thing, this 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 cognitive thing that's lit on the inside of us that wants to rule. Mm -hmm. Not that we're bad people. Not that we're a duplex. Not that we got a black dog, white dog fighting on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. Not that we're, we're a mutt. We're not a mutt. Right. Yeah. We're not a mixed breed. Right. Amen? Amen? There's a pure seed on the inside of us. But there's some thinking and some cognitive Places there's some places in our soul that still are not uh, brought under, Amen. are brought into the reality of the Holy Spirit and the sanctioning power that the Holy Spirit has on behalf of the kingdom of God and the statutes and the constitution that have been set forth in the Word. So there's a sanctioning power underneath the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is in the earth, but then there is, there is also a constitution in the Scriptures. Oh, y'all catch that? Mm -hmm. So there's that double witness. But when we walk in levels of lawlessness, which is the absence of boundaries, and the absence of boundaries only reinforces an independent spirit. So we don't need the independent spirit that we carry. We don't need to be of an independent spirit. That's why the Bible says, for as many that are led by, are brought, and that word led is not some cute thoughts you get that you can hear from God prophetically. It means to be brought into exile, to be captive. Amen. So when we allow certain thoughts to oppose and exalt itself against the God in the temple, then we can honestly say that we haven't been brought into captivity yes. right. or exile. He has not left us to ourselves. Yes. We're not comfortless. We're not orphans, as you suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been submitted to another government, another, another administration. The new covenant is the representation of another government, another power that be. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 In fact, this is, this, just listen to this. This iniquity, wickedness, illegality, Violation of a higher law. I mean, we just did a teaching about the above life. Mm -hmm. And we said that that life that's beneath us is hell. And we, we wasn't fire and brimstone. It's, it's, it's having, not having the ability to connect with God, to be able to perceive the things of God. Amen? Amen. And so it's a, 
violation of a higher law that is still at work in us, and this happens because we let it. So there's a violation. So when you say a mystery of iniquity, you're talking about a violator. Mm -hmm. Somebody that wants to violate or break the scriptures. Somebody who has an independent thought other than what's written in the tablets of their heart. Someone that has an independent thought in them instead of, because in, in, when I say instead of, that's anti. You already know it. Instead of, it's anti. An antichrist spirit mm -hmm. is against the anointed. We carry the anointed. All of us have been anointed. All of us have been anointed. There's an anointed that abides in us. We got ranks, we got degrees, degrees, and, and we got measures. So all of us are not in one group like some of us want to make everybody alike. No, we're not. Amen. There is a diversity. And that's okay. But we need to know. That there, there is a sanctioning body. There's a constitution in place. And there's a spirit that God has given unto us. To bring us to a place where there is restraint. So the word let us. Let it. That we, it says that means to restrain or hinder. The course of or progress of. To hold back, detain and retain. And in one place it means to keep in memory. So that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to keep us in memory. He wants, I, I mean, that's where he wants to get. He will, look, your imagination, as I told you, your memory of what you've done is not greater than God's imagination for you. And the Holy, that's why you, look, that's why you got to be renewed in your mind. Because your memory will hold you hostage. The things you've done, it's, it's your record. 